Welcome back to the show. Texas Congressman Ron Paul, who finished a close third in the Iowa Presidential Caucus last evening. Dr. Paul, welcome back, sir. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Larry. All right, let me just begin with your speech last night. Excellent speech. I thought I stayed up late and watched it. Now, you said that you have ideas that Republicans need. I want to just start with this. Are you talking about your free market, libertarian, Austrian economics? Is that one of the key ideas that Republicans need? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you'll probably understand this statement, but somebody came up to me that evening and said, I'm waiting for the day that we can say we're all Austrians now. You remember Nixon's statement, we're all Keynesians now? Yeah. And that ushered in a bad age in the 70s, and we've had a lot of government intervention. They all justified deficits. So, no, I, I believe in the free market economics. I believe in, uh, you know, working hard and saving and accumulating capital. And you have to have the proper tax code, and you have to get rid of the inheritance tax, and you have to do something with the corporate then you can have capital building. But too often, people don't quite see it that way. But you need the right environment if you want to get jobs. Do you think the other candidates, this is really where I'm angling on this, you've got the guys that uh, finished ahead of you last night, Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. In your judgment, in all honesty, do they understand the brand of free market economics that you are advocating? No, I, I, w I would say they don't. Uh, I give I give Mitt a little bit of credit because he did work in the private sector. I think he's a little bit better. But you take a guy like Santorum or Gingrich. I mean, they've never had any practical experience. But none of them have really, I think, thought seriously about uh, Mises and Hayek and Rothbard and and Friedman. I think they they think in terms of uh, you know patching up things and uh, maintaining the status quo and don't rock the boat and you can't cut anything that's what I get so disgusted with so the so much inf misinformation about the the effort to make these big cuts in Washington and the super committee is supposed to cut 1.5 trillion dollars over the next 10 years and you know that's just a tinkering little bit of cut on the proposed increases and I believe sincerely if we're serious and Republican Party is supposed to be the conservative fiscal policy they should be willing to stand up and be counted and argue for for some cuts, you know, and they are not doing that. You won overwhelmingly on these entrance polls to the extent that one can use them accurately. You won overwhelmingly on federal spending and deficits. Now, I want to ask you, you also won overwhelmingly on independence. You got 44% of the independent vote. You got almost half of the youth vote, uh, nearly, uh, yeah, nearly 50% of uh, age 17 to 29. Can you bring independence into the GOP? Can you bring the young voters into the GOP? Well, I think better than better than the rest, and I think people who will vilify my supporters, which they try to do at times, uh, it doesn't make any sense. I thought the party was there, you know, broad tent, big tent, bring people in. But aren't young people pretty important? They might not have ever made a commitment. So I get real energized when I go to the campus and talk about economic policy and talk about, you know, gold standards and things like this. But they, they don't want to invite these people in. And then they use this as a negative. They say, oh, this Ron Paul's bringing in these strange people. They want to take over the party. Well, but what do we want to take it over with? Do we want to take it up with big government? Do we want to spend more money? No, they want to spend less money. And they and I talk a lot about self-reliance and getting the government out of the way, protecting our privacy and protecting their right to spend their own money. And, uh, and then there's a hesitation for Republican leaders to welcome people like that in. But I do have to admit, things are changing. I think we've made some inroads. Four years ago, it was much worse than now. Well, but I think they're, we're getting a little bit of respect now that they should open their doors to these young people and the independents. Well, let me just ask, um, does this presuppose that you want to improve the Republican Party? Will you stay a Republican, sir? It's a big question. You're running strong. Will you go third party or will you stay Republican? I, I, have, I have no intention of doing that. I, I mean, I think uh, right now I'm doing so well, why would I even think about it? And they asked me this question, you know, the last go around. I kept saying the same thing. I have no plans to it, no intention to it. And I guess that's one teeny little bit of not, you know, signing an oath, you know, of saying, you know, I absolutely promise on, on and put my hand on the Bible. But I have no plans to do that. No, I want, I think the place where I've operated, I've operated in the Libertarian Party for one year, the 
laws are so biased against the third party movement that I have opted out. I was raised in a Republican family. I was elected 12 times to Congress as a Republican. And I think they, at least their rhetoric is better. I'm not convinced, you know, when they get in charge, you know, they end up pr passing prescription drug, drug programs, doubling the size of the Department of Education. And, and you know, and they never hold up back on Was that Senator so Santorum? Are you pinning Senator Santorum with that? <laughs> Yeah, he sure he he's voted for all this stuff and uh, uh, and he can he, you know technically he is not he's a typical big government conservative uh, Republican and uh, not really conservative he's just a big government Republican and but he masquerades as one but I don't think he really like you said the polling last night showed that people knew me to be the fiscal conservative and they voted for him for other reasons mm -hmm. it was more the social issues. Just last one, sir. Um, the note of discord between you and the GOP, or the major note, last evening in your uh, speech, you called yourself a Robert Taft Republican, I think was the right phrase, which, of course, is an isolationist Republican. Now, as you know, Romney and Santorum and Gingrich are slamming you, particularly on Iran and the nuclear threat and the terrorist threat that they pose. Can you reconcile your Bob Taft isolationism with their uh, attacks on you? You. You're going to go into more debates coming up this week. How does that work, and how do you stay in the GOP with that? Well, I, I think it's rather easy intellectually. Emotionally, they have some problems because uh, that's what the Republican Party used to talk about. But I don't use the word isolation. That turns people off. I, I want to be a non-interventionist. Matter of fact, you know I'm a free trader. I don't like sanctions. I don't want to put a sanctions on anybody. Some people who criticize my foreign policy said I'm an isolationist. But they're the very first ones who want to put on tariffs and, uh, and interfere with trade. I'm the one that's championed free trade with Cuba, open up trading and travel to Cuba. So this is absolutely different than uh, uh, free uh, than uh, than uh, isolationism, but but the whole whole thing is they want to what they think is conservative is never cutting a penny out of military spending that has nothing to do with defending this country, and this is what Eisenhower warned about it too. Military industrial complex they're going to have you know uh, influence, but I think we have a stronger national defense. I think they should be our troops should be here at home defending our borders and not. Pretending they even know where the border is between Afghanistan and Pakistan. We don't need to invade any more countries or start any more wars. We need to be concerned about people who have nuclear weapons. We contained the Soviets when they had 30,000 of them right. when I was in the Air Force. We got by. So this idea that we have to go to war because somebody might get a nuclear weapon, even the head of the Mossad in Israel said, you know, even if, is, if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, it's not an existential threat to Israel. So we should pay attention right. to the debate that's going on in Israel as well. All right. Thank you, sir. We didn't even have a chance to have some fun with the Federal Reserve and their new interest rate targets. I know last night you right. called for a new monetary system, including gold. I'd say God bless on that one. You know that. Anyway, Congressman right. Paul, all best luck. Godspeed on the campaign trail. Thank you, Larry. All right.